Great. So um, as well as editing and curating, another one of the ways that we work um, in talk is, is by making artworks as well. We're, we're artists, practicing artists. And uh, this part of the talk, I'm going to talk about um, some of the works we've made with uh, Tom Schofield. Uh, and in particular, this kind of intersection of media and language and the sort of co-evolution of media and language that we explore through these works. <clears throat> so as well as giving us the, splay, the space to explore kind of the library as an institution, this self-reflexive method allows us to explore how production and dissemination from new media are connected to the reading and writing techniques of innovative language practice. So this kind of like hybrid literary new media practice um, is a, a big part of like where we sit. So we're looking for the moment language and media converge and overlap and twist together and that's part of the inspiration for the talk name. Uh, there's obviously a history of language technology sort of analysis um, including uh, Friedrich Kittler's um, uh, important book Gramophone Film Typewriter and in this exhibition really we're looking at works uh, that demonstrate we're in an analogous moment to the 18th 19th century that uh, Kittler wrote about uh, from gramophone film typewriter to smartphone hypertext emoji predictive text AI speed reader and spell check maybe these works uh, in the exhibition they reimagine the library as a place of congregation for the kinds of readerly writerly agency offered by new media Um, error and disruption are key aspects of the way that media and language twi twist together and inform each other. Uh, in the work of language-based artists like Anna Barham, uh, whose work we can see here and is exhibited uh, in the exhibition and was part of the workshop programme, as I said, uh, and Erica Scorti, whose sheets you can see uh, to the side there. With her work, uh, Anna coaxes voice recognition technology to make mistakes and turns these errors into a writerly method, producing uh, perhaps Gertrude Stein-like text works that map the outer fringes of the computational capacity for understanding and transcribing our throat, jaw, tongue, air manipulation mechanisms. Erica's clean sheets works are not themselves digital, as you can see, I don't need to tell you that, but still they're haunted by it. They are evidence of a kind of digital refusal. Their overworked layering, overloaded sentimentality, and the kind of shattered cubist patterning of the text blocks in them evoke a digital glitch. They are a post-digital work in this way, reframing writing as something that is done through us, evoking the bed-ridden pandemic refuge uh, com compelled to write by uh, the cognitive weather driven by smartphone informatic flows. And like, indeed, as many of you will know, Erica's, lots of Erica's work concerns kind of writing with smartphones and the, kind of com the way that media compel us to write. And this is a sort of mo move on from that work. Uh, in my own book, Glitch Poetics, I describe how artists and poets deploy other kind of art language errors to evoke uh, the disruptive integration of digital technology into our lives, either consciously, as with Anna uh, and Erica's work, or in the case of the internet novelists, through a kind of process of sublimation. Uh, in the case of the internet novelists, I, I sort of draw a comparison between uh, the microtemporal processes of uh, display and transmission in audiovisual media, which uh, Rosa Menkman has so sort of uh, comprehensively captured in her earlier glitch works, and the kind of things that happen to the protagonists of internet age novelists. And there's two quotes here where the, the protagonists seem to sort of themselves be dissolving into the background. And so this is like part of the sort of like error experience of, um, of like living with media today. One of the other aspects of the media language relation is the way in which rapid social, environmental and cultural shifts push against language forming new words. Uh, I put some of them up here. Bro Rosie Bedotti talks about language cracking under the pressures of the Anthropocene as all disciplines and materialities become subsumed by media. And so in the second part of this talk now, I'm just going to talk a bit, I'll talk a bit about how we use the neologism as a kind of method uh, in our own AI works. 
But first, I just want to talk a little, very, very briefly about the context for when we work with language AI, what we're doing that's sort of different from the, the sort of mainstream understanding of language AI. So we don't work with GTP3, which is a sort of, uh, as everyone will know here, I imagine, a really advanced AI tool for authors. Uh, as, the, as these numbers suggest, there's a huge uh, sort of energy cost to running uh, GTP3, and there's also massive sort of privacy, privacy exploits uh, in the way that it's made. But also, I compare the experience of reading GTP3 to listening to someone describe their dream. Uh, both things are utterly believable, uh, like sort of they, they seem to reflect reality, but uh, they're essentially too boring to listen to. Uh, and I could uh, draw a, an example here of the first uh, paragraph from the first novel co-written with GTP3. And my sense of these kind of texts is that not even the co-author has really been able to read them. Um, the, the, sen the sentences are at first sort of captivating, and you're amazed that an, an, a computer could have come up with this high fidelity language, but then almost without noticing, the sort of the eye slips over it because it just is uh, sort of inconsequential. So in contrast, uh, we want to work with a small data approach that results in more sort of like tangled and sort of lo-fi um, techniques, and that, that includes our website, uh, Crash Blossoms, uh, and a number of uh, other work, um, which I believe Tom will talk about, called the Rereader, which is uh, a hand-trained AI. But then also our um, self-help book, our automated self-help book. So these works use a recursive neural net that calculates the probability that one letter will follow the next um, based on a particular textual training set. So it doesn't know anything about what language is or what meanings of words are. It's just purely based on the statistical probability of letters following each other. And what we've done is set up different methods and reasons for involving people in the training of these RNNs. And the idea is that a certain kind of audience might derive knowledge, awareness, and understanding of reading, writing technology from an engagement with these works. So through the difficulty and trickiness and sort of like faultiness, we sort of hope that people will be able to maybe more invest themselves in what writing technology is. Um, so the self-help book gen generator, it's not you, it's me, uh, is pre-trained on 20 or so self-help books, computer manuals, and cybernetics texts. Uh, and they're listed as part of the work, so you can sort of see what that data set is. And the idea is that this relatively small data set is on a much more human scale, so you can imagine actually being a person who's at least read those books, and it adds to the sort of legibility of the input-output output relation. Um, and from its reading and analysis of those texts, the RNN learns with relative accuracy what a word looks like and what sort of prose-like things are. Um, and with a click for this work, user is offer, is sort of generates a, a page of prose from, from the thing, and um, spelling errors are made by the machine because it's, it's trained only on a small data set. And we ask people who visit the site to provide definitions for these new words, uh, thus kind of like helping the AI write its own self-help manual. Um, and what, what we see there is like the, those neologisms that the that the work make in this extract, it's come up with the words contextion and strection. And they're kind of like statistically likely errors from this kind of mix of cybernetics texts and self-help books. So the idea is that they somehow hover in the place between human helping and, um, and, and computer helping. Uh, and so these are some of the definitions given by people who visited the exhibition either here in Cyprus or in Liverpool. So in effect, we're interested in turning readers into writers or exploring the continuity between reading and writing practices in a networked situation. So once these exhibitions are complete, the book will be finished and myself and Sam will have to wrestle then with this faulty prose and like work out a way of publishing this book along with the annotations co-authored with visited to the uh, exhibitions. And so the work, um, this fi final slides really, um, the work's complemented in this exhibition by Joe Devlin's drawings, uh, which are a palimpsest of all the annotations made in a book drawn onto a single page. 
And as with Joe's drawings, we hope there's a kind of disarming modesty to the approach of the way that we work with AI and actually to the show as a whole, um, where we, we're kind of looking to experiment in the margins of media, art, and literature. And um, we, we, we hope that this idea of an exhibition as a library sort of pushes on other, it sort of offers another sort of strand of like the, the, the way that uh, me media art galleries have appropriated other kind of types of institutionality. So lab, you know, the media lab or uh, a, a sort of follow on from that into the media library. And we um, want to ask really, can media art organizations use the concept of the library to reshape itself around the, the kind of media literacies that we need today. I've given this sort of idea about maybe the literacy around uh, AI, but there's obviously other kinds of technology. So we, we might be able to read media uh, or visitors to our institutions might be able to read media and understand it better through these kind of practices. Um, and so that's me. And so now we've got, we're lucky to have Tom, who's our collaborator. He's going to talk in a bit more detail about some of the, some of the works. Thanks.